And this is this is dancing link. Global current event scientists have discovered a bubble around our solar system on Rowling Lion Wave and some NASA has spotted a record breaking the huge comet heading towards us. Thanks to a new genius telescope, we could hear distant signals from aliens by 2000 birds. And Ukraine have launched a 3D scanning project designed to document and save treasure before Russia destroys it. The Sibelius violin competition has banned Russian participants saying the move is in order to protect other competitors. A commentary man has been sentenced after engaging in sexual communication with a child. David McMahon, age 39, appeared at Warwick Crown Court on Monday. McMahon and communicators with a now 14-year-old girl nearly six months before he was arrested for grooming a child, and last week he was given eight months to spend a two years. McMahon, on Hudson Vale, Tile Hill, was ordered to sign the sex offenders register for ten years to carry out 200 hours of unpaid work. He will also have to wear a tag for all week. A Metropolitan Police Counter-Terrorism Officer had two condoms, a bottle of lubricant, and pills for erectile dysfunction in his bag when he attempted to meet a 13-year-old girl's sex court as her. Francis Olwich, a tech constable who was serving with the Met Specialist Operation Unit, is accused of grooming what he believed to be a 13-year-old girl he had met on a like online chat forum. Comedian and actor Gilbert Gottfried has died at the age of 67. EastEnders star Melanie Clark Holland has died at the age of 46 after a battle with breast cancer. Katie Price's ex has taken legal action after she made a post compared him to Jimmy Savile. UK inflation has jumped more than expected to a 30 year high of 7%. The WWE is coming to the UK's Principality Stadium for its first major event in 30 years. A Birmingham man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after a 7 week old baby has died in hospital. A Twitter investor has sued Elon Musk for delaying to disclose shares. A survey has found one in three GPs want to wait within five years. Weather students has given a pay rise to thousands of staff rising their wages to over £10 an hour. Online fashion retailer ASOS has said they expect a £14 million pound hit from Ultimate Trade in Russia. The CDC have revealed data showing how the pandemic negatively affected teens' mental health. A UK minister has admitted the government is still paying £1.7 million pound per week to store unusual COVID personal protective equipment. The European Union has adopted new laws to ensure continued supply of medicines to Great Britain and Northern Ireland. A woman has revealed her autistic son was sectioned for six years against her will. The United States has ordered its consular staff to leave Shanghai. A new GPS tracker has been revealed designed to trace sufferers of dementia who are at a high risk of going missing. The European Union suspended some of its military activities in Mali due to the alleged involvement of Russian private military companies in the conflict, especially during the siege of Mora in March. Five soldiers are killed and several others are injured after a landmine planted by Islamic extremists explodes in northern Pandajare National Park. Many police officer is stabbed and slightly injured in Ashkelon, southern Israel. The attacker is shot dead. Armed Fulani herdsmen are killed 23 people in Bendu State, Nigeria. US President Joe Biden calls Russian war in Ukraine a genocide. Major flooding in South Africa, mainly in the city of Durban, kills at least 45 people and leaves many others missing. An explosion at an AMO movement scout camp in Sibon, Lebanon, kills one person and injures seven others, according to the National News Agency. The incident occurred due to an incident in a Hamas weapon depot. Shanghai has eased its COVID-19 related restrictions for some 1.8 million residents and be concerns that lockdown restrictions would harm the economy. Taiwan has reported 501 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, which is the highest single-day figure of new cases this year. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, his wife Carrie Johnson, and Chancellor Rishi Sunai are fined for breaching the COVID-19. COVID-19 lockdown rules. Grant Schatz has confirmed Boris Johnson's fine was 50 quid. Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have rejected calls to resign over lockdown by Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt signs a law criminalizing abortion in the state, with the exception of cases when the mother's health is in danger. According to the law, anyone forming an abortion face fine up to $100,000 and up to 10 years in prison. Although the women undergoing the abortion would not be penalized, 17 people are injured during a mass shooting and small bomb attack on the 36th Street Station in Brooklyn, New York City, United States. A Colombian citizen is arrested in Russia on charges of spreading false information about the Russian armed forces on social media. This is a personal case of foreign national based impossible prosecution under Russia's new vague news law. The Chilean Constitutional Convention approves defining the country as a social state in the new fundamental law, a fact that various constituents and experts interpret as a turning point in the country's history. Stranger Things Season 4 has finally landed with its star, revealing that since she has turned 18, she has received more sexualized comments. Max Fly and Sugar Babes are among acts confirmed play Glastonbury, and Kurt Cobain's guitar for the Smell Like Teen Spirit video is going for all. Global current events. Russian authorities claim they have evacuated the entire populations of two villages after Ukraine forces shelled the Russian settlement of Sovereigua in Belgorod Oblast. Russia claims Ukrainian helicopters have shelled the town of Kilmovo in Bryansk Oblast. The local hospital says seven people are wounded too seriously. The Russian Defense Ministry states that the crew of the Russian Navy cruiser Moskva has been evacuated in the Black Sea after an explosion and fire on board left the vessel severely damaged. Ukraine claims to have hit a war 
warship with Neptune anti-ship missile. The death toll from the floods and landslides caused by tropical storm Medjit in the Philippines has risen to 115. Iran begins nuclear centrifuge production in Natanz, Esfahan province. The Russian Defense Ministry claims around 1,000 Ukrainian Marines surrender to Russia. Ukraine makes no comment. The United States says that it is sending an additional $800 million in military aid to Ukraine, as well as heavy weapons including artillery systems, artillery rounds, armoured personnel carriers, MI-17 helicopters transferred from Afghanistan, 300 switchblade drones, and unmanned service vehicles for coastal defence. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryakov says US and NATO vehicles transporting weapons on Ukrainian territory are legal military targets. Governor of Charkiv Oblast Ole Sinye Hubov says that seven people have been killed and 22 others have been injured in the Oblast during the past 24 hours, the Russian Defense Ministry says it will begin to target Ukrainian decision makers, including President Volodymyr Zelensky and command centers in the capital Kiev, if Ukrainian forces continue to attack Russian territory. Presidents and Zerzhev Duda of Poland, Gitanas Noseda of Lithuania, Akils Levitz of Latvia, and Alok Harris of Estonia arrive in Kiev and meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The Israel Defense Forces raid the city of Nablus in the West Bank, killing one person and injuring 31 others. South Africa says that it is extending its participation in a multinational counter-insurgent coalition in Mozambique. Nigeria says it has uncovered an alliance between bandit gangs and the Islamist Boko Haram group. Four gendarmes and seven border police are killed in a series of attacks by jihadist militants. The death toll from the floods in KwaZulu and Natal, South Africa during the last five days has increased 300. A 6.3 magnitude earthquake has hit the Papua New Guinea island of New Britain. Ten people are killed and 14 others are injured when a truck crashes into a tourist bus in Aswan Governor of Egypt. Eighteen people are killed when a truck carrying 29 people is over in Indonesia's West Papua province. 28 people are dead after a boat capsizes in Sokoto State, Nigeria. Six people are dead and 13 more injured during a fire at pharmaceutical battery in Andhra Pradesh, India. The US CDC and TSA announced that they have extended the mass mandate public transportation until May 3rd. US Health and Human Service Secretary Xavier Becerra announces that the Biden administration has extended the COVID-19 state of emergency for 90 days. The state of emergency was expected to expire on April 16. Bill banning abortion after 15 weeks of gestation styled on Mississippi bill and restricting its access to minors comes in force in Kentucky after the legislation overrides Governor Andy Bershear's veto. The British government and Rwanda agree on a deal to relocate illegal migrants who arrive on boats in the United Kingdom to processing centres in Rwanda. Finnish Prime Minister Sanna Marin says Finland will decide on NATO membership within weeks after Russia warned the country against joining the Western Military Alliance. The suspect in yesterday's mass shooting and smoke bomb attack at a New York City subway that injured 23 people is arrested following a hit from bystanders. And Disney announces that it shut down Club Penguin rewritten, which was seen as a successor to the defunct Club Penguin over concerns of copyright infringement. Assets are seized by the police intellectual property crime unit. Three people are arrested in London, United Kingdom, on suspicion of distributing materials infringing copyright. Global current events. Russia launches major missile strikes on the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, saying the incident is in retaliation for this month's Belgorod and Bryansk attacks. More than 150 Palestinians and three Israeli police officers are injured following clashes at the Al Aqsa Mosque. A man is injured during a stabbing attack in Hafa, Israel. Police say the stabbing was likely motivated by political reasons. At least 35 people are dead and 71 injured when a bus carrying church was in an Easter gathering crashes in Chipinje, Zimbabwe. Russia says that two Ukrainian helicopters carried out at least six airstrikes on residential buildings in the village of Kilmovo in Bryansk, Oblast, injuring seven people. Ukraine denies the accusation, saying that Russia shot the villagers themselves as part of a plan to whip anti-Ukrainian hysteria. The Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency grants the first European approval of the Valneva COVID-19 vaccine for people aged between 18 to 30 years. The Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency also approves the use of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine for people aged between 6 to 11 years. The US FDA announces that they have approved the first test to detect COVID-19 through breathing. Shanghai reports a record 2,573 asymptomatic cases and 25,146 new asymptomatic COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours. Health Canada authorizes use of the AstraZeneca antibody-based therapy EVU 
shield for immunocompromised patients aged above 12 years. Hong Kong authorities announced that they will ease some of their strict social distancing measures beginning on April 21st, including lifting the ban on private gatherings of more than two households, extending dining service at restaurants to 10 p.m., and allowing the reopening of most premises. As the number of COVID-19 cases declines, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases worldwide surpasses 500 million. Frank James, the suspect of Tuesday's attack in the New York City subway, is held without bail in a federal court. Florida Governor Don DeSantis signs a bill banning abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy in most cases. A reduction from the current 24 weeks barring legal challenges bill is expected to enter into effect on July 1st. Finance Minister Lawrence Wong has been selected as leader of the fourth generation leadership of the People's Action Party, paving the way to be the next Prime Minister of Singapore.